Hi everyone, uh, today I'm clearly not on my own, I'm joined by the wonderful Sarah who basically it's as much her channel at this point as it is mine because she is in virtually every single video. Thank you. Thank but I'm you. very, very excited about today's video, I hope you are too. I am. Um, because we have a very exciting announcement for you. Now some of you may know that I recently have been doing the All About Austen read-along which was a six month long read-along reading all of Jane Austen's published novels like completed ones in publication order. That started in August and then we've just done the final book which is Persuasion and Sarah joined me for three out of the six of those uh, little reading discussions and we had such a fun time that it kind of sparked a desire to do something else and so today we're bringing to you let's get classical Woo! the a to z of classics read along get excited because we are <laughs> Um, before we go any further, I just wanted to mention that Sarah's uh, Instagrams are linked in the description box down below, so feel free to go and check her out. But the entirety of this read-along will be taking place on my channel. There will, of course, be discussions, live shows, reading vlogs, and lots of good stuff. But you might be wondering, what is the A to Z of Classics read-along? So, let's get into it. So, as Kira was saying, this is a 26-month-long Read, 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 read along, read, read along, along, read along. I, I never know. I feel like they're kind of, I mean, they're both made up words. So whatever you want yeah. to call it, this is it. Basically, we're reading a classic a month for 26 months to go with, to correspond with 26 letters. Of the alphabet. Essentially. <laughs> so that's what we're doing. I did have a moment where I thought the alphabet had 24 letters. So I was like, oh, great. Two years. Exactly. And Jay had to tell me that. <laughs> That wasn't true. <laughs> you were close though. I am a literature person, not a maths person, so numbers, not my thing. I know letters of the <laughs> alphabet. <laughs> like I know the alphabet, but I never really think about the corresponding letter to the number. So there we go. There's my excuse. But essentially what we have is 26 months, 26 books. They're all classics. Some are modern classics. Some are like proper firm classics. I feel like we've got a real good range of books there. Yeah, I think we've definitely taken we've taken liberties <laughs> with the A to Z whole situation. Some letters, the, all the letters correspond with either a book title, an author's name, a character. character. We really we had to yeah, get in there. Yeah, we tried to be creative with it, and I hope you're going to appreciate the way that we've organised this because I think it's a lot of fun. Yeah. But essentially, what I wanted to do with Let's Get Classical is just make classics like fun. I think they can be daunting, and also there's like this expectation that people who like books have to read certain ones. Whereas with this list of classics, I feel like we've tried to go for some that are very well known and popular, others that are a little bit more obscure, and also just kind of like make classics a little bit less daunting by reading them together and having fun with it yeah it's definitely a range some were literally what we found on waterstones shelves yeah i think we had some books where we were like that's definitely what we want to read for this letter mm. and others where we were literally on our knees scouring oh, the shelves in waterstones <laughs> yeah trying to find books so let's get into the list because there are a lot of books that we're going to be reading and i think it's going to be a really fun time <laughs> So naturally, the alphabet starts with the letter A. So for A, we are going at it with Atwood and we're going to be reading Alias Grace by Margaret Atwood herself, which I'm very excited for, starting with a modern classic author, but one who is a legend. So, and I'm excited because I have read The Handmaid's Tale, have you? Years ago, but mm -hmm. I'm talking... Years. Years. <laughs> Yes. Um, I then read The Testaments, which was the follow-up to The Handmaid's Tale, less good than The Handmaid's Tale itself. I have heard that. And then I also read Oryx and Crake, which is another one of her dystopians, mm. and that was very, like, very strange. So I'm interested to sort of, like, go into another one of her books and kind of see what it's all about. So that is what we're doing for A. For B, it's Big Up the Brontes, and we're going to be reading Tenant of Wildfell Hall by Anne Bronte. I think this is the one that kicked it off, this it whole... It was, yeah challenge fun reading concept <laughs> this thing because i read an article about anne bronte and how she was the forgotten bronte, bronte. Sister, yeah and you know i thought we should really push that so i'm really really excited for this one i've not read anything that she's written no, i've read emily bronte's stuff and charlotte's, charlotte's but yeah, yeah and i think that's true of a lot of people and obviously 
being two Yorkshire gals, um, I held up my tea because I'm drinking Yorkshire tea, though that wasn't obvious to the outsider. Um, but essentially, we are from the county where the Bronte sisters are from, so it only seemed right that B had to be for a Bronte sister, and having both read the other two, it seemed like a nice opportunity to bring some attention to Anne, mm. so that is B. <laughs> so for C, we're going to be chilling with Charles, Charles Dickens that is, and we're going to be reading Hard Times. Now... It was a struggle to choose a Charles Dickens book, but we knew we wanted to. Um, we've both read and enjoyed Great Expectations. Yeah. Um, I've also read Oliver Twist, and I've read A Christmas Carol. Now, so. Christmas Carol would be my favourite choice because it's so short and also really fun. Oh, I just love Christmas. Yeah. Some of the other ones were really, really long. Huge. Um, and Charles, he can be a bit waffly with his writing style. So we went for hard times because it is the shortest one of his books that we hadn't read yet. So yeah. I've also heard though it's the most hard. hard. <laughs> so that's gonna be an interesting experience for us, I think. But if we can crack hard times, you know what, I'm confident we could crack anything. So love that for us. So for D, we're going down with Daphne and we're reading The House on the Strand, obviously Daphne du Maurier. I've read Rebecca mm-hmm. and Jamaica in. Same. But I'm not I don't know what the house on the strand is about. So, The House on the Strand, from my understanding, is, um, in fact, I'm gonna go ahead and read the blurb because it sounds very interesting and I feel like it's one of her lesser known books. So it says, when Dick Young's friend, Professor Magnus Lane, offers him an escape from his troubles in the form of a new drug, Dick finds himself transported to 14th century Cornwall, there in the manner of Tewardreth, the domain of Sir Henry Champernoun, he witnesses intrigue, adultery and murder. The more time Dick spends consumed in the past, the more he withdraws from the modern world. With each dose of the drug, his body and mind become addicted to this other world, and his attempts to change history bring terror to the present and put his own life in jeopardy. Now that sounds super interesting. I think that sounds better than Jamaica. And also quite rogue, like a little bit different to her other types mm, of books. Okay. So I have personally read Rebecca, Jamaica Inn, uh, My Cousin Rachel, and then also The Birds, which is a short story collection. I enjoyed the three full length novels. The Birds was definitely my least favourite because I don't really like short oh, stories. I'm not really a short story person. But. That sounds very interesting, and again, I feel like, um, kind of like with The Tenant of Wildfell Hall, it's kind of like one of the Daphne books that doesn't really get that much focus, so I'm excited. Moving on to E, we're going to be spending an evening with Elliot and reading Silas Marner by George Elliot. Now, I'm somewhat nervous about this one, but that's what this is all about. It's kind of like about getting out of your comfort zone, reading authors you might not otherwise reach for, and just kind of like expanding your literary horizons. So I actually hosted a Middlemarch read along with my friend Mary last year, which is George Eliot's like biggest and meatiest book. And it was not my favorite. But then at university, I read The Mill on the Floss and I did like that. So I'm hoping this one is gonna be more Mill on the Floss than Middlemarch. But we're just going to go into it with an open mind and see. It's also tiny, like ti- tiny. Yeah, that is true. And I feel like that always bodes well for me. <laughs> Definitely. For F, we are freaking out with Frankenstein. Woohoo! Um, you've obviously read Frankenstein before. Many a time. I think. Just, just once. Um, I read it, I have read it just once. But again, <laughs> years and years and years ago. Um, and I feel like I didn't fully appreciate it. So I'm excited to delve into it and I think appreciate Mary Shelley more because I yeah. don't think I did the first time. Mm-hmm. I think it's nice to go into a book second time round and like go in with fresh eyes and just kind of like experience it a little bit more. I don't know. Mm. I feel like Frankenstein for me is such an iconic book so I'm excited and I hope you enjoy it more this time. So for the letter G, we're going to be having a good time with Gatsby who is also my rabbit, but in this instance we're talking about The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald, which is another reread for me, but I feel like you can never read The Great Gatsby too many times because it is just such a quick and easy read in terms of classics, but like there's so many things to be taken from Mm. it. I know some people think it's overrated, but I just think it's a fun text and one that I really enjoy. Definitely, because I did it for A-level and I think the more I read it, the more I actually enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. So I think it'd be good to read it now, 
having enjoyed it multiple times, but without the pressure. Yeah. Of like, trying to pass an exam. Yeah, which is always a bit of a struggle when you're like trying to enjoy a book, but also there's a lot riding on what mm. you take from that novel. So I think it's nice to go back to books that you've previously studied and read them purely for enjoyment. For H, we're going hard for hard day and we're going <laughs> to read <laughs> Tess of the Derby Wolves. Um, I obviously by Thomas Hardy, if that was not clear. <laughs> um, I've not read any of his stuff at all. I feel like I. I don't know if I know a spoiler for Tess of the Devils or not. Like, I'm not I'm not entirely sure if it is to do with that book. I just know it's a character called Tess. Something happens to. I kind of know. It's like, a, I think it's meant to be like about a fallen woman story. Yeah. Um, but I really know very little other than that going in, so... I just, I don't know if it, the spoiler I know is for this book, because I just, there aren't many characters called Tess. I'm almost certain that, like, Tess of the Devils was referenced in, like, a few Jacqueline Wilson books with, like, her characters that yeah. like books, and I think maybe I'll have, like, heard something about it there, but I don't, I've not really committed it to memory, but Tess of the Devils, we were thinking, because neither of us have read any Thomas Hardy, like, that one just seemed like the... Yeah. The most well-known one, and probably, like, the best one to start with, so I'm very excited to dive in, and, like, a new author. How fun. Exactly. So, moving on to I, this is one of our more obscure authors, and by that I mean it's one of the authors that I had personally never heard of until the point that we were scouring the shelves of Waterstones to try and find someone for the letter I, which it turns out is not that common in terms of book titles or authors' names. Mm. So we are going to be in it with Isherwood, who is Christopher Isherwood, and we're going to be reading his book A Single Man, which I know nothing about, um, aside from what the blurb said in Waterstones, but you seemed quite keen on this one. I think Colin Firth does a film mm. of this. I love Colin. Where he, oh, Colin Firth. Where he's the main guy, I think. And he's also written Goodbye to Berlin, which I own. Oh. I haven't read. Bought that because I went to Berlin and you know, just <laughs> never, never read it. Classic. But I've heard this one is supposed to be one of his best ones mm. but we shall have to see yeah we'll find out in a few months time for jay we are going to be jumping for joyce Woo! I'm so proud of that one and we are doing the <laughs> portrait wait the portrait a portrait no not the uh wait isn't it it's on the a portrait of the artist as a young man right okay so you can cut it you can edit it so like just as i'm about to say Maybe do i just have to do the whole oh my yeah. god okay for Jay, we are going to be jumping for Joyce, and we're going to do a portrait of the artist as a young man. By James Joyce. By James Joyce. Thank you. <laughs> um, I have not heard of this one. The only James Joyce I think I've heard of is Dubliners mm-hmm. and Ulysses. Ulysses. Yeah. Um, I don't really know what else he has aside from those three, to be honest. Um, I read Dubliners at university, which is another short story collection. It wasn't bad, but as we know, I don't love short stories. Um, And I've wanted to read more Joyce ever since. And then I think when we really, although Anne Bronte was the thing that kicked off the concept, as we decided to start like playing around with the idea of A to Z's and we got to the letter J and Sarah said, jumping for Joyce, that was the moment when we knew this had to happen because the world deserved to hear jumping for Joyce. I was so Joyce. proud of that one. I think that one is one of our best ones. Yeah, more than anything. Like whether I'm going to enjoy the book or not, I don't know, but I am going to enjoy saying jumping for, jumping Joyce, for Joyce as many times as possible. So it's a win for me. Next up, we are going to be kicking it with Kerouac and we're going to be reading On the Road by Jack Kerouac, which is a really satisfying name to say, might I add. Mm, I do, I do agree. Yeah, um, I don't know much about this book. I know he's obviously from like the Beat Generation. Um, I think it's on the Jess Mariano reading list from Gilmore Girls. Um, yes. But I've never gotten around to it so far, so now seems like a good a time as any. I agree. It was on one of the extra reading lists that you could read when you were in sixth form doing A-level English. Oh. I can't remember what main text it corresponded <clears throat> with. I think probably like Rams the Edge Mariner or something <laughs> like that, which kind of gives me maybe a hint as to what it is about. Right. But I don't really know. I actually haven't got a clue. I've only got an inkling. My inkling could most likely be wrong. We love an inkling though. Exactly. Uh, for L, we are going to be living laughing and loving <laughs> with little women uh by louisa may alcott i've read this you've read it haven't yeah. you i think 
it's, it's a classic, you know. We just had to <laughs> get it's it on the there. Aim of the game. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> it just had to be on there. It's such a wonderful book. Um, I think a firm favourite with a lot of people who've read it. The 2019 movie adaptation is A Thing of Beauty. I've not seen it. <gasps> You've not? The one with Emma Watson and Florence no. Pugh? Oh, I love the first one. Oh my god. Sarah. I love the original. My issue is, is that I wanted to, so I, I, we'll discuss this more when we get to it, but I started off hating one of the characters and I just couldn't get past her. However, I've heard that the movie portrays her in a better light and so I wanted to reread it with more of a, an understanding of which character just... Amy, isn't it Amy? I the love Amy. One. I think I think we were talking about this, and yeah. I think you made me realise that she is. I think she's the one who's supposed to be portrayed worse. Mm-hmm. But actually, so I wanted to reread it before I saw the film. I've never gotten around to it. Oh well, you know what we'll be doing when we get to the Little Women Moment. Watching the bloody film. We'll be watching film. the bloody film because it's so good. I'd also be keen to watch the one with Winona Ryder in. I love that one. Oh, yeah. So it's mostly going to be a film month that month, but we will read the book as well. But yeah, Little Women, I just think is such a wholesome reading experience and one that I'm very excited to share with you all. So now we are on to M and for this letter, we are going to be mastering the margarita. (laughs) And that of course means we're going to be reading The Master and the Margarita by Mikhail Bulgakov. And I am very excited about this one because it's one of Jay's favorite books. Mm. Um, It was actually his ultimate favorite book until he read The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexander Dumas. But um, The the Master and Margarita is up there with his faves. Mm. So I'm excited. I own it. (laughs) <laughs> and I <laughs> along with every as, other book as I do with, with many many books <laughs> um can't remember why I bought it but you did I bought yeah so clearly I did want to read it so I'll be actually interested to go back into it and, and read it and actually see what it's about yeah I think it's it's got a talking cat in it so classic that's what you need isn't behemoth, it behemoth I think the cat is called oh, what a name for a cat. I know so yeah lots to look forward to with that one for N, we are having a night in with Nabokov, and obviously, we are reading Lolita. Um, I read this years and years ago. Oh, you've ago. read it already? Yeah, but I can't remember anything, and I think I skimmed it, because I didn't really understand what it was about. I read it at an age where it was appropriate for me to read it, don't get me wrong, but I also didn't think I understood it, so I, I, I'm going to technically say I haven't actually read, read it, it okay. but I have, but can't remember a single have, thing. but you haven't. Yeah, like I cannot, cannot remember anything at all. So I would actually like to read, read it. it properly. Yeah, and understand it. <laughs> and I haven't read it, so I'm certainly, um, I'm like, I wouldn't want to say apprehensive, but I'm going into this one with like, proceed with caution, because obviously I know it's like quite a um, controversial book, and I don't really know what to expect from it, but I'm interested to see how it pans out. Same, <laughs> to be honest, because I really can't remember anything at all. So for the next month, we are on O, and we're actually giving you a little treat here by reading not just one, but two classics by the same author. One is a short story, or like a novella, and the other is actually a play, so we thought we'd just throw one in there for the fun of it. And we're going to be having Oh What Fun with Oscar Wilde, and we're going to be reading um, his short story, which is The Canterville Ghost to check my phone for that one because I had never heard of it until we saw it's, it in Waterstones yeah. and we were set on that we were like let's read an Oscar Wilde we'll find that book but we thought potentially that's a little bit too short to have like as the only book for that month so what we've gone for as our play is The Importance of Being Earnest of course also by the wonderful Oscar Wilde and I'm now just realising that both of my pets are in this read along because we obviously have Gatsby for G Aww. and then Oscar for O. Oh, so represent. Oh, what fun indeed. <laughs> for P, we're having a party with Pasternak and we're reading Dr. Zhivago. I. Boris. Boris. Bye, Boris. Boris. Boris, Boris Pasternak. Just for a little bit now. I haven't read Dr. Zhivago. I. When I did Summer's Russia at A level, my teacher put on the first half an hour of Dr. Zhivago. <laughs> But I didn't have a bloody clue what was going on. No. So it'd be actually interesting to read it. I know my dad loves this book. 
and mm. the film. But Yeah, I Jay read a lot of Russian classics um a couple of years ago and that was on the list of ones that he'd read. Although I can't remember how it kind of ranked against some of the other ones, but I guess we'll make our own judgments on Dr. Zhivago. Sorry. <laughs> so we're up to Q. And you might be thinking, how many books start with Q? Are there any authors that start with Q? Well, we had a bit of a struggle and there seemed only one true contender, Mm. but I'm nervous about it. So for Mm. Q, we are going on a quest with Quixote and we're going to be reading Don Quixote by Cervantes. I had to double check who wrote it for a second. And then I was like, is there just one name? Are they like Cher? Is it just like, you know, (laughs) (laughs) is it just like single name, you know? But yeah, we're going to be reading Don Quixote. I'm scared about it. I'm terrified. Um, but it's we're huge. in it together. So here we are. It's only one way through, and that's through. That's <laughs> literally start page one. <laughs> through. So that's cute. For R, we are rolling down the road with Cormac McCarthy. What book is it? The Road. The, road. <laughs> <laughs> the book for this is The Road. Um, I hadn't heard of this at all. I've heard of the author briefly in passing because Waterstones always has loads of his books. I mean, he's got an insane amount of books, Huge. to be honest. Um, but I actually don't know anything about this one, really. You picked it. It's like you? a post-apocalyptic dystopian set in a world where we have a guy and his son basically walking through the apocalyptic landscape where like, there's nothing left it's quite bleak very dystopian and um we love a bit of dystopian so and by we I, I mean me i can't speak for you yeah i don't really read a lot of dystopian i'm not gonna lie to you <laughs> well there we go that is our rolling down the road <laughs> So, moving on to S, we're going to be stepping out with Steinbeck, and we are going to be reading East of Eden by John Steinbeck himself. Um, I read... I read... I read... I read a wand on Steinbeck. I think that actually suits you that much. Uh, I've read one John Steinbeck, which was Of Mice and Men, which most people of our age in the UK read as their GCSE text. Um, but you didn't, did you? I actually didn't. I did Purple Abyssus for mine. Um, I read Of Mice and Men for my own pleasure. Crazy. And I think maybe that's why I actually love it, because I read it for my own pleasure. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, but yeah, I, most people that I know of um, have read Of Mice and Men as like a school text, so then no one else really seems to pick up any John Steinbeck for fun. So we thought, let's change that. Let's step yeah. out with Steinbeck. So that's what we're doing. For T, we are tripping with Tolstoy. By, by? By Tolstoy. <laughs> Tolstoy. <laughs> oh, it's because we're doing a named <laughs> book, so I um, got confused. That's his, like, uh, edit with Pretty Little Thing. Tolstoy by Tolstoy. <laughs> Tolstoy by Tolstoy. <laughs> uh, we're doing Anna Karenina. Karenina? Karenina. Yeah, Karenina. Karenina. Um, you've read War and Peace, haven't you? And Anna Karenina. And Anna Karenina. I have not touched either <laughs> with a barge pole. Uh, I own them, but again, that's not really a surprise. Um, I'm excited though. I think I was reading the synopsis or mm-hmm. blurb of Anna Karenina, and I think it sounds really, really interesting. So I'm really looking forward to this one, yeah. despite the fact that you could blood and somebody to death with the size of it it is large but less large than war and peace so we definitely wanted to include by like that large a couple of hundred pages at least My which i think makes that image. makes the difference when you have a book that's that large like a hundred or so pages that makes a difference Mine looks the same. so um i think we, we wanted to include a tall story war and peace is gigantic anna karenina is giant so just like a little bit less than gigantic it, it sounds easier to handle i feel like because if you say war and peace a lot of people like use the phrase war and peace as a synonym for like unobtainable exactly. reading experience so i think maybe the fact that we're not doing that bodes well yeah i also think so i've read them both and enjoyed them both war and peace is exactly what it says on the tin it takes place throughout the period of like the french invasion of russia and it takes place over several years and we go through periods of when they're at war and there is a lot of detail in the book about like the specifics of war and the invasions Ooh. and like very specific like battle details which jay loved because he's a big like history nerd um and then 
the piece bits are um, more so about like society and like relationships and all of that kind of stuff. So I personally was a lot more invested in the piece bits because I feel like they were the bits where you got to know the characters a lot better, whereas the war bits and the detail kind of it didn't go over my head, but I just kind of zoned out for some of it. Whereas Anna Karenina, I feel like embodies the peace bits of War and Peace. So it's all about society, relationships, family values, um, scandal, loads of good things. And mm. I genuinely think it's such a good book. So I'm excited. And I don't think it reads like such a long book. Like when you're in it, I don't think it feels like a chore, or at least that wasn't my experience. Yeah, I feel like the fact that you're willing to reread this shows that it's going to be good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So as we started getting towards the <laughs> end of the alphabet, we definitely had some slightly more tenuous links to try and get titles and authors in there. So for you, you, I point at myself, <laughs> I'm going to go again. <laughs> you, I, me. I'm going to go again. <laughs> for you, you, me and Haruki Murakami are going Whoa. underground because he has a book called Underground. So that's what we're doing for you. And I'm pretty excited about it because I've never read any Murakami. And I feel like that's kind of like a bit of a sin, to be honest. Because, I'm so excited. Yeah. I Because I've read Colourless Life of Tsukisaki's Years of Pilgrimage, which I think is a fantastic, fantastic book. I've not read Norwegian World or Cafe on the Shore or any of the actual popular ones. <laughs> but... I'm so You're excited. Not like other girls. No, exactly, exactly. <laughs> I'm different, you know. Um, so I'm really excited because I do want to delve more into. I mean, I own, bloody own them all, don't I? So I want to actually delve more into his work. And this one is quite small. I mean, my copy is like about that big, so mm -hmm. it's not. It's not like we're reading really Capricorn the Shore, which is huge. Yeah, I'm excited about it. I always love going into a new author, but especially if I'm reading it with someone else because I think it's such a fun way to like discuss and like. Make sure you understand what's going on, because sometimes reading a book on your own, you're like, I've no idea. So Definitely. this is going to be fun. V, we are vibing with Vonnegut, Kurt that is, <laughs> and we're reading Slaughterhouse Five. Um, I've not read this one. I confused this one with the Fahrenheit 451. Is this a dystopian as well? I think they both are. I'm sure they have similar covers. Yeah, they do. They of do. fire, maybe. I can envision it. I feel like they are definitely marketed in a similar way at Waterstones. They're often put on the same tables. Yeah. But yeah, I, I'm so sure it's a dystopian. Um, I one of them is wrong. about burning books, but I feel like that might I be think that's Fahrenheit. Because I think that's. I think that's more specific. But yeah, anyway, we don't know what it's about, but we know it's popular. We're doing so well. And I feel like that's fine. You know, you don't need to know loads about every book you go into. Sometimes it's nice to just go in and think other people say this is a good book let's find out <laughs> so i can't seem to say this author's name um but for w we are gonna work it with wow and i, just <laughs> feel, like, I feel like i have to what? wow what? wow i'm sure it's war wow 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 what? you can really talk what? <laughs> Wow. wow. <laughs> I wonder if Evelyn Waugh could really dance. It, wow. Waugh. Waugh. Wa wa Evelyn Waugh. It genuinely. I think. Like, I'm sure. I did this for A-level, so I should be. Waugh. Waugh. <laughs> <laughs> Evelyn Waugh. <laughs> 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 um, so we're going to be reading Bright's Head Revisited um, Woo! by... Wow. 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 <laughs> I know wow. I'm going to get a comment and be like, you say that's so wrong, but it is, it is what it is. Someone say who's right, please. Or if neither of us are right, someone tell us how it's sure meant to be I'm said, right. please. I'm sure I'm right. Cool. If not, then, you know, blame probably, my English teacher. You probably are right, to be honest. That It sounds more But legit. I feel like it should be said in a posh voice, you know what I mean? Even war. Like, not even war. And you know almost I mean? as if you're like, even <laughs> bright head revisited with even war. <laughs> like that. Yeah, we're gonna go with that. Um, but that's what we're reading for W. For X, we are doing, excuse me, we can't find a book that starts with X, but X marks the spot, so we're gonna read Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson. Hell yeah, we are. Is that the right um, author? Yeah, that oh, is. Excellent. <laughs> um, do you know, I had a real moment of revelation when we were discussing this one because. 
Robert Louis Stevenson also wrote Jekyll and Hyde. That's why I thought I just said the wrong author. Exactly, because they seem like two books that should not have been written by the same person. And in my head, I actually thought that Daniel Defoe, who wrote Robinson Crusoe, might have also written Treasure Island. I I was literally just thinking, did Robert Louis Stevenson also write Robinson Crusoe? But no, so yeah, so Robinson Crusoe is by Daniel Defoe, and I feel like, because they're both like island-based books, I kind of associated those two with the same author, and you'd never put Jekyll and Hyde with Treasure Island. No, exactly. But yeah, we're about to, because I've read Jekyll and Hyde, but I've not read Treasure Island, so... I've read Jekyll and Hyde. But I did it for school. I'm excited to see like what Treasure Island is all about. <laughs> so, have you seen the film Treasure Planet, the Disney film? Right, I <laughs> love that film. That film is up there as one of my favourite childhood really? films. And obviously it's based on Treasure Island, a fact which I only found out like last year. <laughs> um, so I'm really intrigued to actually read it and see if I can pinpoint the inspiration yeah yeah interesting see i've watched that film but like so long ago and it certainly wasn't like a favorite of mine that i'd watched it again so i really don't remember much at all so i'm going in with like very like open eyes and very few expectations and i'm excited about it i'm really trying to convince myself to not be disappointed at the fact that it's not treasure planet if you want we can watch treasure planet in that month (laughs) thank you (laughs) so a (laughs) full For Y, coming towards the end of the alphabet, we're going to be yeeting it with yeats. <laughs> um, and we are going to be reading um, Revolutionary Road by Richard Yates, which if I am correct, and there's a good chance I might not be, but if I am correct, Revolutionary Road is a film starring Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet, who oh. I would love to see together again. Obviously a big fan of the Titanic, as we all are, I'm sure. The Titanic. The Titanic, the film, to clarify, not the actual book. Um, But Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet are wonderful in that together, so I would be quite excited to see them together again. Mm. I love a film adaptation. So, Revolutionary Road, yeeting it with yeas. Let's go. For Z, the last letter of of the the alphabet, alphabet, just in case anybody famously known, was unsure. We, we are, um, <laughs> we're going zany with Zelda Fitzgerald and we're reading Save Me the Waltz. No, not. Save yeah, Me. Are. Yeah, I was right. I didn't know if it was the last waltz, but I, I feel like that was the last Save dance. the Last Dance. <laughs> I'm sure that's a film. Oh God, the fact that we, I mean, there's 26 titles to remember here, so please give us We've a done little bit so of credit. Well. We've um, done so yeah, well. we're going to read Save Me the Waltz. I don't actually know anything about this, apart from no. when we started formulating this list, and yeah. this said that, this article said that Fitzgerald took a lot of inspiration from Zelda Fitzgerald, mm. thought we should get in there. Yeah, especially because we have obviously got F. Scott up mm. there and G with Gra- with Gatsby, um, and I know maybe we could have been a bit more adventurous and gone for a different Fitzgerald, but... I feel like we need that female empowerment. Absolutely. So, I yeah, I, forgot I think it's, it's exciting to read something by Zelda because, obviously, there's a lot of uh, controversy about, like, her and the relationship with F. Scott Fitzgerald mm. and, like, her mental health and all that kind of stuff, so I'm excited to see what the book is all about and see her writing style and also, like, read more from that era because... I've read The Great Gatsby, but I haven't really read much else from that, like, 20s zone. I don't think I've read anything else by Fitzgerald either. No, so it's exciting to sort of, like, expand our horizons in that way. And that, of course, as we have established, brings us to the end of the alphabet. So, those are the 26 titles that we're going to be reading for Let's Get Classical, the A to Z of Classics read-along. As is always the case whenever I host a read-along, there is a link in the description box down below to the Discord where you'll be able to find uh, like streams for each of these books and you can have chats about it throughout the month. Sarah and I will be hosting a live show at the end of each month on this channel where we will dive into the books in 
depth and just basically like discuss all of our thoughts, any adaptations that have been made and just basically have a deep dive into the classics and of course all of your questions and opinions are welcome in those live shows but the discord is just a place for you to chat in the meantime about all of the books and your thoughts and of course any recommendations for other classics that you may have. Um, I think we have forgotten to say but this read along is going to be starting in March of 2022 so that is the very next month and we're going to be kickstarting it with Atwood as we said at the beginning. Now I certainly don't remember that entire list of books so I don't expect you to either so the full schedule will be in the description box with dates and months attached to each of the books and of course if you do join the discord you'll be able to find it on there as well. So that's quite a lot of book talk for one day um, and there's you know over two years worth of book talk left to come. Oh my god. So Cheers to that. I hope you're as excited as we are. And without further ado, let's get classical, classical. I wanna get classical.